Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Hopefully you're sitting down, ready to take notes. Welcome to this video on the second derivative and what it means graphically. We've already looked at the first derivative and what's true for the first derivative holds largely true for the second derivative and helps us sort of understand the implications there. So, first derivative, we know that if we have a positive slope that goes to a negative slope, we get a sine diagram that looks like plus minus and we get this turning point. Conversely, negative to positive, we get a minimum. Sometimes though we have positive positive and we get these stationary inflection points. And it's really these inflection points that we're taking a closer look at today. So before we do, it's probably worth reminding yourself what the second derivative looks like. 4x takes 6, 4. So you just do the derivative process twice. Clearly, we're not just doing it with quadratics, we'll do it with lots of different types of functions, but the process is true for all of them. All right, we want to look at concave down and concave up. Concave up used to be called convex, you can probably get away with still calling it con convex, but it confused so many people, we decided calling it concave up. All right, so concave down, if you look at the derivative of negative x squared, minus x minus 2. What that means is the second derivative is negative for the entire thing. So the entire length of this function is the second derivative of negative 2. If the second derivative is negative, it is concave down. So second derivative being negative, the graph will be concave down. It will have that downwards curve, like a cave. Opposite is true as well. If it's positive, like this, it will be concave up for the entire graph. So, second derivative is positive is smiley, negative is frowny. Great, high technical way to remember it. All right, so let's look at inflection points. Inflection points are when there is a change in shape or curvature, from concave up to concave down or reverse. They occur when f dash x, f double dash x rather, equals to zero. So here, the second derivative would be negative and positive, and we get this inflection point. Here it's going to be positive, here it's going to be negative, and we get an inflection point, is that point where the graph changes from one to the other. And in each case, it occurs when the second derivative is equal to zero. Sometimes we have a special type of inflection point. If the inflection point has a gradient at that point of zero, then we would say that it is a stationary inflection point. So in this case, we have a curve which is positive and here which is negative so there is a sine diagram change of sign here positive to negative in the second derivative but the first derivative also has a zero at this point here f dash of a would equal to zero and then you have a sine diagram of negative negative because the slope either side of it is negative <clears throat> looking a little more detail at this particular section of curve, you can see that it turns at C and B. It means the first derivative will have a sine change at B and a sine change at C. However, the second derivative lets us spot where we change from concave down to concave up, which is this case here. Right. Um, I note the tangent at the point of inflection is called the inflecting tangent. So that's this one here. All right, so brief summary before we get into a short little practice one. Um, you have turning points, and turning points occur when there is a sign change in the first derivative. You have inflection points when the first derivative is second derivative is equal to zero and there's a sign change. When both cases are true, when the, say, the second derivative, sorry, the first derivative is equal to zero and the second derivative is equal to zero, you get what's called stationary inflection points. All right, let's look at an equation. Find and classify all the points of inflection for this quadratic. Now, realistically, you're probably not going to be given this question as a quadratic, but the process I go through as a quadratic is one that can be applied to uh, logs, 
trig functions, exponentials, etc. You can do the same thing just using different algebra skills. All right, so to find the classifiable inflection points, we first of all find f dash x, which for our case is very easy. And I still mess it up. 3x, the 2. We then set this equal to 0. And then we solve. Now, solving, of course, will look at a whole bunch of different things, but generally factorizing helps us out. x squared, what do we have? 4x takes 3. And therefore, our two solutions are x equals 0 from this first one, and x equals 3 on 4. <clears throat> what this means is the first derivative is equal to 0 at 0 and 3 on 4. So from here, we draw a sign diagram where this is x, and it's a sign diagram of f dash x. And we are interested in the points 0 and 3 quarters. And we want to start with by putting in something down here. So let's sub in the value of minus 1. And here's a really key thing. When you're subbing in minus 1, not do it to the original function. I'll admit something. I just recorded this video previously and did exactly that, and it got myself very confused. Don't go to the original function. You're doing it for this. And you're finding the sine diagram of the first derivative, so the substitution must go into the first derivative. So if we put minus 1, you can either put it into this or into the factorized form if you find it easier. And then we'll get the sign from there. I'm going to put it into the factorized form because I think it is easy because minus 1 squared is just positive 1. Minus 4 minus another 3 is minus 7, so this is going to be negative because minus 1 times minus 7 is negative. All right, then we put in a value between the two. Um, I would go... Oh, probably 0 0.1, or you could put in a value of a half, and I would put it into this one here. You could put a half into there. What's that? Four lots of a half cubed minus three lots of a half squared. So that's four on eight minus three on four. It's going to work out to be negative as well. Lastly, we choose the value above. 3 quarters, so anything above, but I'd probably pick the value 1. Um, you can choose 1 wherever you want. I would probably put in this first one. 4 take 3 is positive. So what we are looking at is this indicates a stationary point of inflection. So there is a stationary point of inflection. at 0, and then we substitute in 0 to the original function to find where it turns. 0, 5, you'll have that it's negative, it flattens off for a second and then goes negative again. And then there is a turning point, and we can be a little more specific, the fact that it's going to be negative and then positive. It means it's going to be a minimum at three quarters, not three quarters m, three quarters, and then we substitute three quarters into the equation. I'm just going to write f of three quarters. So there is a minimum and a stationary point of inflection. Now, that doesn't mean we've found them all yet. So let's consider the second derivative. In order to get all the points of inflection, you must do the first and the second. second. All right, so second derivative of x. We look back at the first derivative, and we make this 12x squared takes 6x. We set it equal to 0. 0 equals, um, and I'm going to factorize it all in one step. So 6x out, 2x take 1 x is equal to 0 and a half. All right. Now, the first 0 shouldn't surprise us because we already strongly suspect there is a stationary point of inflection here. Um, and the half, though, is more interesting. 
So we draw a sine diagram. Oh, that's great. For x, for f double dash x. And we are looking at the point 0 and a half. Now we sub in, say, minus 1. If we sub in minus 1, 12 lots of minus 1 squared, that's really 12 lots of 1, minus 6 is going to be, well, plus 6 is really positive. All right. Then after 0, so between 0 and a half, we have, say, a quarter. Um, you could do 12 lots of a quarter squared minus 6 quarters. 12 lots of a quarter squared is 12 over 16 minus 6 on 4. You don't have to fully work it out, but 6 on 4 is more than 1. 12 on 16 is less than 1, so that's going to be a negative. Um, note, you should be practicing these using no calculator. It's every likelihood that this will come up in a non-calculator section of the exam, and being able to pull fractions out and work fluently with fractions is part of being successful here. Um, all right, then above a number above a half is one. So if you pull in one, you'll be pretty happy that will be positive. So what this is indicating is that this is concave up, this is concave down, this is concave up, meaning there are points of inflection at x equals zero and x equals a half. And from our first uh, derivative, we can tell that the one at zero is a stationary point of inflection. All right, so we've already classified the stationary point of inflection, and this just confirms it. We don't have the half yet. So there is a point of inflection non-stationary at x equals to a half and f of a half. So we substitute the half into this original function here. Find the y value. And if we want to, we can look at what this looks like on a calculator. So we've put the function in, we draw it, and yes, my calculator is old. I can zoom in probably a little. And it's not super clear, but we're expecting there is a stationary point of reflection at zero, which we can sort of see. After that, it says there's a point of reflection at a half, where we go from negative to positive, and we could imagine something in there happening. And then we know there's a turning point at three quarters. Oh. G solve minimum. X equals 0 0.5. That must be F of three quarters. So we can see the turning point. That's nice. But you're not necessarily going to be able to see every inflection point, which is why they would do this algebraically. So to recap, to find and classify inflection points, you need to do first derivative, sign diagram, second derivative, sign diagram. And then make sure you're substituting back into the original to find the point. Substitute into the derivative when you're doing the sign diagram. All right, so that's been a long video. Hope you got lots of useful notes. Look forward to practicing in our double next lesson.